Hello everyone and welcome to my DxO Photolab 6 review. So today I'm just going to do a really fast fly through video to give you an idea how this software works, how easy it is to use it and what's so cool about it. This is my photograph in Photolab 6. Above here on top you can see there is the light panel which is giving us all our exposure controls. We have the color panel here then. Then we have our details panel. Then we have our geometry panel. We have our local adjustments panel and we have our watermarks and effects panel. So if we just go back to the light panel, light panel is usually where I start off and so what I can do is I can adjust the overall exposure so just by sliding this exposure slider up and down we can adjust the overall exposure in our image so I've brought it up a small bit too much there now but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to our highlights here now which is going to adjust the brighter part of the image and just pull that back a small bit not an awful lot bring our mid-tones up fractionally and our shadows up a small bit there now again and that's looking reasonably okay drop our blacks down a small bit so that's helping to balance out our image to a certain extent there now. The next thing we want to do then is we have like this clear view plus, which is it's, it's adding like clarity to it. So if there was a lot of haze or whatever else in the background, which there kind of is there now, I can click on that. And what it's going to do is it's going to add clarity to the image. So you'll help see through. So if I just pull that back a small bit, it is helping us there now at the moment. So if I switch that off, it, it's a bit foggier. It's a bit mistier. It's a bit hazier. So in this photograph, I think that haze or that misty effect really helps because I love this like prehistoric look of those two islands with the shaft of light coming down along there. So I'm going to leave it in it here. So I'm just going to go through here. Contrast is the next one. So we can adjust our contrast up and down a small bit. Again, they're just gentle little nudges. I'm going to bring that back a tiny little bit there now again. Somewhere there, you have micro contrast there too as well. And um, you have your tone curves and whatnot. We're going to skip them for now. We have vignetting controls in the bottom here now too as well. But what we're going to do is, again, because this is just super fast, we're going to go over here to our color panel. In our color panel then, so working color space. We have DxO wide gamut or we have classic. So basically you're just, it's, it's adjusting the amount of colors you can actually physically see in your photograph. I'm really liking the wide gamut, being honest with you. We can adjust our color temperature. So we can adjust that up or down. Now that is a lot warmer than it actually was. I'd say it was probably close to somewhere around there now. That looks fairly right to me there now. Our tint, um, our tint was nearly bang on it. So, so then we go to vibrancy and we go to saturation. So I can bring up my, again, you can whack up your vibrancy there now if you want to. i bring the vibrancy back down. Again, I'm not mad in those sliders, generally speaking. And bring the saturation up a bit too as well. And you get it to where, I'm going to bring it back there now somewhere. You get it to where it kind of looks a small bit the way like it was when you were there. Because that's the whole point of editing photographs. Now, this is the most important thing here for me, personally speaking. The DxO camera profile. So, it's already after selecting that it was shot on a Nikon Z7 Mark II. So, what I can do is I can adjust the actual profile intensity on the camera here now. So, I can bring it down or I can bring it up. So by adjusting that, you can see it is changing our coloring completely too as well. Now that is looking, that is looking really close. The one thing with it is the water and everything else looks a bit too dark. But what I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to adjust that at a slightly later point. So we have our HSL controls here too as well and split toning and whatnot. Again, that's going to be for a deep dive video, which I'm going to pop through now in the next week or two. That's our basic color adjustments in that panel. So we've gone through light. We've now looked at color. The next thing we're going to look at is detail. And this is where it gets a bit interesting. In detail, we have our noise reduction software. So if I, let's say, zoom way in along on that there now, you can see there is a tiny bit of noise in that. But we're zoomed in a mass. Like there's the original image. We're zoomed way in along. So I can switch that on. I can have it on high quality. So that is going to help and it's going to reduce the noise. A lot of that is gone. I can go to prime. I can go to deep prime which is going to reduce the noise even more than again. And I can go to Prime XD. Now, the one thing with this is you're not going to see a massive difference on this image because this image is clean enough. It's the fact that we're zoomed way in along. So noise reduction, again, I'm going to have a completely separate video on this super soon while well, showing Deep Prime XD in action and how cool it is. So let's just kind of skip past this now again. We're going to go to lens sharpness. So here we have our global lens sharpness control. So as I Sorry, as I slide this up along a small bit, you will see the image has now got a lot sharper. Like, look at that tiny little archway here on the island. You can actually see straight through. That is really cool. So that is, that was our original. Just that bit off. We're just missing a small bit of sharpness. And now I can whack it up even more. And like anything else, the more you adjust the sharpness, the more noise you're going to bring in, the more finer details you're going to bring in. And I suppose the less real it looks, for me personally. 
So I'm happy enough with that there around now. You have a detail slider, you have a back slider there too as well. You can adjust those. You have chromatic aberration. You can adjust the intensity, the size. You have proper fringing then too as well. And then you have this really cool fella here, retouching control. So if I switch that on and if I click on tool here now, you'll see a little side panel op opens out along here. So let's say for argument's sake, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch that off again for two seconds. And I'm going to move this over here because I want to play around with this island. So if I switch it on there now again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this island because I don't like it. So I can just go along and go boom. And it's going to select it there and it's gone. Island's gone. Just completely got rid of that island in seconds. And it looks really cool. Now, the other thing with it too as well is you can actually play around and you can say, right, actually what I want to do is I don't want one island. I want two islands because that looks better to me. <laughs> so you know, it, it's it just, it, 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 so there's the, there's the cloning tool and there's the repair tool. So you can use both of them there and as such. Again, I'm going to go into that in a lot more detail too as well later on. So we have an unsharp mask here too as well again. That's a job for another day. You have more uh, control here too as well. And you have a red eye tool. So we're now over in the geometry panel. So what I'm going to do here is there's a horizon automatic correction tool here too as well. So you can correct it to horizon manually here or if auto is switched on, it will automatically correct it for you. And boom, there we go. Now, again, you can see there's a um, small bit of uh, black bending where the image is after actually being overshot because of the fact it was corrected. Quite easy to correct that. You just go to the crop tool here. Now, the correction, you can have it manual or you can have AI based. And there we go. That's done. It's actually after correcting our image for us there now. Or I can go back to manual here now and I can select my aspect ratio. When I was shooting this photograph, I was torn between two different aspect ratios. The first one I was looking at was um, your standard 2x3 image. The second one I wanted then was a, a two by one. I was thinking a bit more panoramic based. So I was looking at this shot or I was going back to the original version. Again, there's two two different photographs in this. I like the detail of the foreground here too as well. And it shows you where you are too as well on the beach. And But the one thing being with it is there's a small bit of distraction going on here too as well. The real story for me here is the waves breaking, falling, the spray going back, the sun behind here, the two islands, and the lovely separation between two of them because of the light. So I wanted to highlight that. How can I highlight that? I can highlight that a bit more by making that larger in the image by cropping it in with doing something like that. So it takes that distraction element out of the bottom of the image and it concentrates you more on this interaction between two islands here and the waves coming in along. So that just, just for me personally, when I was looking at that, that was exactly what I wanted. Now again, I can switch on the tool and I can move this around the place. I can make it smaller again, you know, that's where I want it. And you say, right, that's it. That's done. That's exactly the crop I wanted in that photograph. You have your distortion controls here then too as well, lens correction and whatnot. And you also have your perspective controls here too as well. So the final two sections, the second last one is local adjustments. So on local adjustments here now, and this is where it comes in handy. This is where you have your grad filters and everything else. If I want to do a local adjustment, I can go up to the local adjustment panel here now as such. And what I can do is, it's, you can see it's actually on the grad filter here now at the moment. But if I want to select my different local adjustments, I can just right click and it's going to pop up. It's going to give me my options. So I have my control point. I have control line. I have graduated filter. So I have my brush tool. I have automated mask. So I'll go to my graduated filter here, let's say. And what I can do is I can just pull this up along here now. And boom, there we have a graduated filter. And here then you can see if I go to light, here is my exposure control. And I can just pull this up. And that's going to brighten out my image. And you can say, right, that looks... That looks kind of cool enough. I pull the stone and say, just let that go back there now. Yeah, that looks nice. Uh, I can just bring it down a small little bit, maybe a small bit too much, Karen. Right. And the next thing I can do then is, is put in a second graduated filter. Now, why am I putting in a second graduated filter? Because I want to darken down this foreground here. So what I'm going to do is just pull this down a tiny little bit. And we just want, we just want tiny little bits of adjustments. And you say, that is it. And there we go. So that is my finished photograph. And it's really quick, it's really fast, and it's really simple to adjust an image like that in Photolab 6. Again, this is a super fast run through. I'm gonna be putting up several more videos on Photolab 6 over the coming weeks. So please do stick around for that. The last thing I didn't get to on this is the effects. So you can put in a watermark on this. So basically, I can type on text here, I can type in whatever text I want, and I can put a watermark on the image and adjust the opacity here too as well. Then export to disk, my photograph is saved. I'm done, I can go on to the next one, edit the next photograph, and there we go. I hope you enjoyed this video, and again, as I'm saying, I'm gonna be putting up a load more videos on Photolab 6 over the coming weeks. Like the Deep Prime XD, 
noise reduction software. I'm going to be putting in a full in-depth review of Photolab 6. I'm going to be talking about all the individual features too as well in separate videos going forward. So please do stick around for it. Thanks again for watching this video. See you out there and mind yourselves.